We have a fun panel here. We have all, uh, an unusual group of all YouTubers here today. So let's let everybody introduce themselves since I'm already talking. I'll start. I'm Aziz of the History of Westeros podcast and excited to talk about the old gods with y'all. So uh, I'm Roars from the channel Roars. <laughs> YouTube videos, history videos, theory videos, news, basically anything Game of Thrones related. Uh, I'm Chris from the channel. This is working. Yeah, I'm really close um, to you, yeah. Yeah, I'm Chris from the channel Smoke Screen. I probably do Game of Thrones, uh, some of the fire occasions. Don't encourage him to smoke. Yeah, 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 don't, don't encourage him. Um, yeah, all day yeah, long. Yeah, and also a new podcast. We're all kind of podcast or YouTuber, so glad to be here. Thank you. Right, I'm Val from Because Geek, and um, I focus more on the show than the books. I love the books as well, of course. On my channel, I talk about the show and I try to um, decipher what David and Dan are planning for the next season with everything that HBO releases, and I go in depth with all the. I do a lot of sleuthing and try to figure out what uh, all the little hints put something together and make predictions. So, yeah, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> cool. Well, we're, glad, we're so glad you guys came. This is a nice full room that's exciting. So apparently a lot of y'all are interested in the mysteries of the old gods, which is great because so are we. And of course there's a lot of interesting mysteries, there's a lot of things to cover, and we've only got 15 minutes so we're going to spend some time talking about some of these basic things that are on the program, and then we'll take some questions from y'all. So the basic idea here is we're talking about the powers of the old gods, maybe whether they're real, and a few specific theories like the Jojen Pace theory, whether or not that's actually him. And one of the well, if we start from a higher level, we'll kind of work our way down in detail. The basic idea, I think, that we're working with here is the old gods are maybe a continuum of dead green seers, or maybe there's some beings out there that we don't understand, they've been around since the children of the forest were, came into being, however that happened. And basically there's a lot of dark aspects behind all this kind of naturalistic worship and the relation to the Starks and all that, which seemed to be very benign at first, but over time it's become a lot darker. Uh, Jojen Pace is maybe the culmination of, of that idea at this point, there'll probably be more, but the whole idea of human sacrifice to the werewolf being a part of the history, being a big part of the history is something that's like, okay, what exactly is going on here? <laughs> Why are people being sacrificed? to trees, and what does that mean? What does that do? Wait, are you saying that's a weird thing to be doing? Um, <laughs> come to think of it, there are a lot of benefits to sacrificing people in front that of trees. True. Yeah, it's a good way to get rid of your enemies. Yeah, good decor, fun way to blow off some steam. I don't understand what I think that's weird. Everything yeah, matches, so. you know, the Yeah, blood exactly, and, and blood just has a way of bringing out a room, I think. Yeah, that's the bolt. They're changing my mind right here. Oh, in the yeah. of the <laughs> so, um, did you guys have anything you wanted to, to say about the general parts of this, or, or should we? I, I, I'll start. Or go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I, I, I've come to the conclusion. Um, I've been saying this on, on my channel for a while. I don't think there are gods. You know, I don't think any exist. I don't think we'll ever get a definitive answer on that. But uh, I, I think that essentially the green steers are the gold gods. Now, I'm not saying the children didn't believe in them themselves, but they did have a culture, and so they probably didn't quite understand that as themselves, but I think I think it's kind of a, been kind of proven essentially to me at least, that with Bran and, and Blood Raven, that that's essentially what they're worshiping, but they don't know that, so. Well, and George has been very upfront about, you're never going to see a god in the book, that you will never see them coming down. It's, it's up to the readers whether you want to believe that these gods actually exist or not. So yeah, we, we definitely are never going to see a god. So is 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 what's thought of as being the gods? Is it just magic? Because you know some of the stuff that like the smoke baby that has that that ain't normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's actually a great segue question because it leads us to the concept of the idea of magical overlap. Why uh, this is something I was discussing on my last panel. There's there's a lot of different types of resurrection magic, for example. The others are raising the dead. Kyber raised the dead, and and Benero, the high priest of, of Relor at, at Volantis, is saying that you know anyone who follows the Relor will have life everlasting. It doesn't sound like it sounds like it. Maybe it is, but it's similar in concept. So we see this all over the place, and I think that maybe there's um, a source, and it's maybe kind of like the weather; it kind of ebbs and flows, and that's why magic has been stronger and weaker over the centuries, depending on other factors, and. 
I think what's happening is they're drawing out, drawing on these similar sources, these different, but the different cultures over time have given it a different name, right? Like just like real world religions, there's a lot of monotheistic religions in the world that give a different name to that one guy, and they have different, they, they certainly worship different aspects about it. But it's kind of a very similar concept when you really distill it to its essence. Old gods are kind of different, right? Because I agree with Chris that they're not, there are no real gods, and it may be the drowned god and the great other, and all these are. They're just cultural inventions to explain these natural, magical, natural, well, they're natural in this world, magical forces that people are drawing on to use in different ways. I like I how the old gods got the, the name, too. It wasn't that the people in the north were calling it the old gods. They didn't have a name for it. And then once the faith came, they're like, yeah, you're the old gods now because we're the new gods and we break here. So they essentially just named them as your old potatoes. It's a good point to the new gods, too. Like, when have we ever seen the faith of the seven, any sort of manifestation of any sort of magic or, or, or I mean, they're the least, they seem to be the least united of major religions. And yet they're the most dominant one in Westeros, which is kind of interesting. When you mean the, the old gods? Uh, no, I mean the, the faith. Oh, the faith, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> and the fact that there's no priests for the old gods is really interesting. Um, that's something that we're not really used to. Uh, as no far as prayers, the world. no songs, no yeah. specific rituals besides the sacrifice. That is very odd for a religion that was around for so long. They don't have those things you normally see with religions. And, which, and weddings require weddings. no, no, no set or, or priest. Yep, you uh, do it a lot of times in front of the tree, the heart tree. That's certainly a, a, a kind of a concept that flows through the whole idea of the old gods that they're always watching. And you want them, and the most important thing is you want them to be direct witness to you. That's why you have ceremonies in front of the tree. But as you as we are sort of led to believe, they can kind of see you anywhere. Maybe. Right? Like Gilly says when they're when Sam and her are on the cinnamon lane. Our gods are watching. We can do it. Yeah. And uh, that may or may not be actually true, but he was a convincing argument at the time. <laughs> Certainly he, he didn't seem like he needed a whole lot of convincing. <laughs> he just needed a push. You know. <laughs> And I think that brings in the question, like how weirwoods work too. Like, wasn't it this? Wasn't it this? Does it have to be a lot? We have a door of the house of black and white. It's made of weirwood. We have the weirwood thrown in the eerie. You know, how does that affect the distance and, and you know, we're going to inside and all that stuff? So it's, it's really exactly because they say in the south they are there. They don't have power down there because the weirwoods were cut down there. So what's what's the limit? What's the radius where oh my power doesn't. Go right, it's in like grand access, for example, where where where, where we used to be in the yeah. south. Yeah. Is it like a Wi-Fi access <laughs> point? Yeah. yeah. There's lots of them in the north, but there's only a few in the south. <laughs> what is that? Wherewood.net, they call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You gotta have a really, uh, you gotta, they gotta upgrade their servers or something. But like, you, you, can't, you can't connect to like a like, wait, piece of furniture. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, seven. Maybe. I can't maybe. move around in here. That's like a that's like an offline computer. <laughs> There's some stuff about like weirwood doors, right? So I don't know. You know, I don't know if it has to be a weirwood tree or it can just be. Jamie is a weirwood. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, Jamie, that, yeah. this is the Jamie's weirwood dream, or it's maybe a weirwood dream. So the thing about that dream is he's, he's resting his head on stumps, but he also has a fever and he also drank dream wine. So it's a very typical George. He gives us multiple explanations for one thing, so we don't know exactly which one it is, and that really ties into this whole concept of are there gods or not? I can never know, but it's a, he leaves it as he leaves question for the reader, which is what. Yeah. So I mean, on that same point, you know, it's uh, so there's something to that I think because you know, uh, the throne in the Irene in the area is uh, made out of earwood, of course, mm -hmm. and Sweet Robin has these crazy, you know, the whispers that he hears in his ears. So it could very well be that it doesn't matter whether it's connected to the ground or not, as long as it. Yeah. You know, one point once connected to the Riverwood network, you can still access it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what I was saying earlier, and but also like in the show at least, you had Grand on a sled. <laughs> Is that a Riverwood sled? You still yeah. have, you know, you're still in a dream state. That's cool. Like yeah. 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 And, and we're told, and we're told yeah. that Riverwoods they tried to plant Riverwoods in the Vale you know, in the area. Yeah. 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 Tank, with the tank, which is kind of symbolic. Yeah. Maybe. Well, and that's where the Andals first landed, right? That's their the, the most analyzed kingdom of all of them. So it kind of makes sense that the old gods would put aside the most there. And that's kind of a thematic thing, I guess. Um, one other thing that I think is interesting, interesting in all this is the whole, is the idea of idea, the way that the old gods interact with the south. Like you said, there's very few trees. Like we're introduced in the, the cat says they're all gone, but they're not all gone. There's still a few in the south. Where, how does a new werewolf pop up? 
Brienne finds a werewolf. Yes, and, and, and buries a couple people. Buries a couple people, right? Uh, Maybe yes. she activated it, right? Yes. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to the blood thing and the Jojo. Yeah. Thing, so. And that was a very young werewolf. So we're like, oh, so they can still grow. And the one at the night forts. Relatively young. I mean, maybe 200 years old, which is for a werewolf, that's pretty young. So it's interesting. Like, is there something magical that has to happen to cause a werewolf to grow? That's probably another one of those unanswered questions. But question mark. Okay, I think you've got your hand up the longest. What about the door that? Um, it's not, it's not in the show. It's in the book. That that Brandon Cope goes through the uh, where the the mouth the mouth or bigger is underneath the wall. The black gate. Yeah. Yeah. It's a werewolf door. Yeah. Well, That's a terrifying door. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 It's a little bit out of place. It's, there's nothing like me to talking door and talking about the entire thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and only the night's watch can access the Bible and say the Bible. So that's, yeah, that's real puzzling. That's one of the stranger, like, latent, like, existing magical things that just sits there. You know, it's, it's not. Yeah. But that's tied to the wall. I don't know what to make of it. But definitely the fact that, that when Brand's head touches head top of it and the tear kind of goes down in the middle, I think that's, that's evocative, I think, of maybe his third eye crying or... <laughs> uh, I think, I think uh, we have to get there. Do you have a question there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned the, um, the door of the House of Black and, and White, and I, you are also mentioning how like the Drowned God and all of these different gods seem to could be a, made, made up for the different cultures. But the, but the House of Undying, it's there's only one God and it's death and it's sprouted all of these. So what's your theory with how like that? You made the two House of Black and White. You're very happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start with that. Yeah. I, I, I think it kind of embodies what I was saying about there are no gods. They're basically saying it doesn't matter what you believe. You're going to end up in the same place regardless. So I think that kind of embodies that um, as far as House of Black and White. They don't. It's, it's hard to say that they actually believe in all these other gods or they respect it, or is it just like Jack and says, you know, you know, death, period. You can't argue, you can argue that gods are real or not, but you can't really argue that death is real or not. Yeah. <laughs> Although some people seem to be cheating and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, after him, it's just a flow, a flood of other people coming back. <laughs> well, let's take some more questions. How about that? Who else has a question? Right here. I liked your slow mo hand reach. You're like, do you want to ask a question? I don't know. Well, it's not a question, but a response. The going back to the laws of hospitality and the and prohibition on kinsmen. If you think about uh, the life in the north, in the north, Bible society, um, and similar to up north, the two things that would be very, very important: you no know, incest. Um, keeping variety in your offspring, as well as laws of hospitality, that it must be safe to travel. You have to be able to go from place to place. There are no hotels or, you know, means of transportation other than going from house to house or house to house. Yeah, those rules were vital, vital, it, especially for speciations and stuff. If I'm inviting you and you're inviting me in, I want assurance you're not going to then stab me or you're not going to slit my throat in the middle of the night. So yeah, it was for helping society run better. And if we see a lot of times, um, religion does that for a lot of times. You have these rules and sets and it helps people behave better or follow certain things or helps them do what the people in charge want to do. So yeah, it really boils down to how does this help society function better? Yeah, it's, it's almost certainly something that some king said long ago, so this is important and made everyone believe that there was a religious necessity to it. And it just went from there. No one's going to go stand up and say, ah, this is all nonsense. The gods don't really think this. Like They want me to stick my dick in my sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was actually wondering where, where it came. Like, would it be if it were the children of the forest that were following these rules, or was it the first men? And um, did the first men learn it from the children of the forest? They did. did. The first men, the children of the forest, brought it to the first men. Mm -hmm. they, they seem to be going against their own thing with Jojen. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Jojen is really dead, then they may have violated the guest right. I don't yeah. think they offered him bread and salt. But maybe they, 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 they get off the technicality. <laughs> but, but you know, when you think about it, when you were saying bring up the children of the forest, did they have issues where they needed to make alliances with each other? The rules, were they following those same rules? Like they had to tell each other, hey, we shouldn't be sleeping with our sister. Uh, hey, yeah, uh, yeah. We, let's have diplomacy. Are you going to stab me in the back, other? Because from what we've seen of them, they don't appear to be as petty as... No. 
Yeah. It's always seemed possible that there are, I mean, in every human society that George gives us, there's there's factions. It's not all, it's not like you have one race that's all united in a singular purpose. So it makes sense that the children of George are It may have been children that were hardcore, that were like, kill all the first men, and the others like, we can't beat them, we yeah. gotta make peace. Well, and it could have been before the first men came and just started wrecking them, that there were so many more that you're right, they had factions at that point, but as soon as they were forced to survive and they kept heading north, yeah, yeah, actually a comment to the, the old, the ways of the old gods, in addition to the incest and the hospitality, it's the one that got um, Jorah kicked out, which was slavery, slavery, mm -hmm. and honor, your word was your oh, bond, slavery, thank you. you had to have those two, because you, everyone had to be able to get along. Everyone's word had to, because what because the phrase besides winter is coming is the coming it remembers. So if you do yeah. some dirt, everybody knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's going to be all kinds of shenanigans and hijinks and whatnot that will ensue, which pretty much is what, to your point, what happened is we're trying to survive. Certain deals were being struck. I think why beyond the wall, they won't kneel. Yes. Because their whole thing is that is totally against us all living together. But the, by kneeling, it's like you're almost giving up that which makes you northern, that which keeps you connected to the old. So I think in that slavery, that honor, and those other four, I think that's what those are, for me, that's what is kind of the, the, the root of that. Yeah, so because so, um, there's, there's definitely a theory that I think there's some merit to that, that he, he first maybe looked for other people before he found Brand. Euron would be the prime candidate because Euron has that line about yeah. when I was a you know when I was a kid I dreamed I could fly or even you know the major said I couldn't. It's really similar to what yeah. Brand says. And it's, yeah, it makes you question if Blood Raven kind of influenced that or if he waited for an opportunity because we know if Brand didn't fall, he wouldn't be a knight. He probably would have never known the journey. So. Well, you know the theory they have out there that Jojen isn't actually a green seer, it's Blood Raven going into his dreams and making him think that in order to lead Bran to him. So there's that whole messed up theory. Yeah, well, I mean, I, and I definitely think it's worth the Bran thing that he sends, you know, Blood Raven sent the dire wolf. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I have a friend that read the story and he thought that whole first scene with the dire wolf was really contrived. And like, man, you just gotta keep going. Yeah. There's, yeah. It's, it's yeah. there's a reason. That's You're right. in for a while. Yeah. Run into those little rims. Kind of speculation, because I think the God's Eye is going to be very, very important. Do you see Brain's story kind of leading him there? And kind of activating his final form, if you will? No, okay. yeah. I, I do. I think the God's Eye is, uh, in this speculation, I think it's where this thing is. Um, and so I, I think it's, we've heard it a couple times about it. But not enough to just it was lost over a couple people have been there. Uh, Howland Reed, obviously, and I think that's where we see him coming to it. There's a reason he is not showing in Winterfell mm -hmm. for very important occasions. John Snow's coordination, mainly with the threat of White Walkers, the Northerners actually know this, believe it. You know, you can kind of say with uh, with Rob, it was you understandable. It was just a war, but not this great war for the Dawn. So I, I think it points to that absolutely. Yeah, like like Chris says, I think it's. The Isle of Faces is clearly, it seems it's been mentioned too many times to not matter. Um, but it's, George has really kept it a secret at this point. Even the World of Ice of Fire he gave us barely. Yeah, you, yeah. you've got a couple of hints. You've got uh, uh, Adam Valerion went there during the Dance of Dragons, and he became seemingly powerful in Howland Reed. That's the people that actually visited and you're aware of them. Please, yeah. you know, as far as my knowledge goes. When there, maybe that's, there's a connection there when Howland Reed goes. Um, and he stays there for a while, and then he comes back, and then he goes straight to the start, and maybe that's yeah. like... So here and all may be a more important thing. We may be missing something there. I think uh, it's probably going to matter more in the book than the show. I don't think Howard Reed is going to be in the show, besides the kind of Tower Joy vision. And that means that means I that probably won't matter. To they haven't talked to the guys that much in the show. Don't say that. Howard Reed won't be in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's going to matter a lot. But we are need to be respectful of the next panel. Yes, thank you all. Yeah, thank coming. you so much.